Hello, welcome to the So Now What YouTube channel. Uh, normally this channel is used for my video podcast that I do bi-monthly where I talk about quilting and knitting and all things creative. But today it is a video tutorial on making the Playful Pyramids table runner, which is right here on the design wall behind me. I mentioned it in my previous episode, which would have been episode 13. And uh, I had some interest on, on how to make it. And so I'm shooting a tu tutorial. It is my first tutorial, so hopefully things go well. Um, we'll see how it goes. So today is Saturday, July 23rd, 2016. And um, I have been a quilter for uh, 12 years or so. Uh, so over the years, I have found the tools that work for me and that I like to work with. I am not affiliated with any of the products that I that I use here. They're just uh, products that I find that work for me. So find what works for you, use what you have. Um, and this is really a pretty simple pattern. It's not for the ultimate beginner. I do suggest that if you are very new to quilting or piecing that you get a little bit of experience under your belt before you try this. Uh, for one, it's because we're cutting things at angles. There's bias edges. Um, it's just a tiny bit trickier than your straight line uh, squares and, and that type of piecing. So uh, if you feel ready to go, then let's get started. Um, I'm going to go over some of the supplies that you need. Uh, I will also have the yardage of fabric that you're going to need. Um, I will post, I do have a blog. I'm not actively posting on the blog, but it's a place for that you can go to get a PDF of the tools that you need, the tools and the yardage. So that if you need to go to the store to collect some of this stuff, you can print that out and take that with you. There is not going to be a printed pattern for this because, um, that's why I'm doing the video tutorial to save me from having to write a pattern. So I will put the information on how you can get to that blog. Uh, down below in the comment section where I will keep any links to anything that I might mention. Uh, the blog name is so now what dot wordpress dot com. So information for this will be there. Uh, let's get started on what you need. First and foremost, you're going to need the Trirex ruler. Uh, this is a ruler that's been around for a very long time. Local uh, quilt shops should carry it. Um, Fabric stores, big box stores may carry it, but look around and see if you can find it. I urge you to, to support your local quilt shop if you can. Um, and then if you need to go online, I'm sure you can find it there. So it's Trirex Tools by Darlene Zimmerman and Joy Hoffman. And what this tool does is it makes what they call a triangle in a square. So um, you can make things like you know, this kind of a star and there's all different things you can make. But for this pattern, uh, we're just using, we're just gonna make triangles out of it. So let me use this piece of paper so you can see what it is that we're talking about here. It is a triangle template ruler and a half triangle. So um, there, I have different kinds of rulers that make triangles and stuff and none of them are the same angle as this. So I can't, I can't suggest anything to substitute this with, so we're gonna go off of this. Um, if you can't find it, I'm sorry, <laughs> but this is gonna be based off of the Trirex ruler. So get yourself one of these rulers. You will also need a rotary cutter. Doesn't matter what kind, as long as it's one that you know how to use and are comfortable with using, that's what you need to use. I prefer 45 millimeter. Some people provide, provide, bleh, prefer the 60 millimeter, which is really big. Some prefer the little teeny tiny ones. This one works for me. You will also need some straight rulers. I use both a 12 inch and a 24 inch. Um, I like these rulers that are made by Ulfa. They're um, because the lines are really thin. And it's uh, the ones that have the big fat yellow lines to me leave a little bit too much wiggle room uh, when you're cutting. Cause it's like, are you cutting on this side of the yellow or that side of the yellow? It's just a little too wide. This has thin lines. I feel like I get a ac more accurate cut with this, but use what you have. You will need a rotary cutting mat for sure. Um, it doesn't matter, like I said, which one you use. This one I flipped over so that I, cause I don't use the lines on my, on my mat and uh, made it, made it more pleasing for you to look at here. 
Uh, you will need your fabric, which I will show you. We'll talk about that in a second. You will also need starch or starch alternative. Um, these are two different kinds that I use, Magic Sizing, which I can get at the grocery store, any kind of store, uh, and Mary Ellen's Best Press. I use this Mary Ellen's for most of my piecing stuff. Um, and then when I want something maybe a little bit stiffer, I'll use a starch, actual starch, spray starch, or this magic sizing. The reason why you need those products, and that's important, is because we are going to be cutting triangles. These edges of the triangle are on the bias, so they're very stretchy. So if you've sprayed your fabric when you when you iron out your fabric, because you know, like you're not going to take a piece of fabric that's got fold lines in it and cut it. You're going to press this out. Um, that gives you, it helps the fabric uh, threads in there to kind of hold together and helps you control that you don't get too much stretch with that bias edge. This is another reason why it's, it's not a great first time project for somebody because you are dealing with those bias edges. So, um, and you will need an iron and an ironing board, a sewing machine that you know how to run with a quarter inch foot or you know where your quarter inch is and you've had success getting a quarter inch on the certain marking on your machine, whatever it is that you use. I have a quarter inch foot on my machine and my quarter inch foot, um, let's see if you can see better on here. I don't know. It's too far away probably, but it has a little, um, I call it my training wheels. It has a little guide. So when I'm sewing, I butt the fabric right up against that guide and that I know I get an accurate quarter of an inch. So whatever works for you with your machine, do that. But everything that's going to be sewn here um, is a quarter inch seam. So with that said, let's talk about fabric. Um, there's two there's probably a lot of different ways of making this table runner and you can really customize it. Uh, this particular one, this one with the white, uses all white background with printed triangles in it. This one here is another one that I did and it uses a different background fabric for the outside and then, and then I've used this like green for the um, background in the triangle pyramids that we make. So it's a two color. Um, I will give information on the PDF on how, how much fabric you need to make a two color if that's how you want to do it. But I'm going to use for this instruction how to do it with the one color background. So um, let's talk about the fabric. This is the fabric that I've chosen for mine. Um, I just kind of did a stash dive in my cupboard. Um, I happen to have just bits and pieces enough that I could make what I want to make. So I'm going to do... A beige background it does have a little swirl print in it doesn't really matter but it's a light color and then I chose darker greens different shades of green to be my triangle pieces my thought is that this will be a, a pretty table runner to put out at the holiday time because it kind of looks Christmassy with the with the green trees is what it's what I'm gonna go for here so as you can see I have bits and pieces they're not full yardages but it, uh, they even, some of them even have like weird little cutouts. Like that's just, I don't know what that is. This is another one used for different things, but there's plenty here to, to do what I want to do. Um, what you end up wanting to have is enough print. So I'll refer to these triangles as the print, which would be any of the, the, the red, black, and gray in this. And then the background will be white on this particular one and will be the cream in this particular one. So whatever color your background is, what you want to have is a contrast. So if your background you choose is dark, then you will want lighter colored triangles. I have a lighter colored background and so my triangles will be darker. Um, you need to have enough variety or enough fabric that you're going to cut 40 printed triangles. So another thing that works really well for this, and it's what I did in this one, is I got a charm pack. And a charm pack, or and they come by different names. Moda calls them charm packs. And they're a pack of five inch squares. And you get one fabric of everything in that particular designer's line. Um, the thing that's nice about that is you get a wide variety of fabrics. And so it gives you um, a lot to choose from. And it, and it makes it interesting. 
So that's one really good way to do it. Those are five inch squares. We cut our fabric here based on four inches. So it gives you plenty of room. You've got a little bit of waste, but it's, it's easy. You buy one charm pack and some background fabric and you're good to go. Um, if not, then you need to make sure that if you're grabbing bits and pieces, you're able to get a four inch because we're going to cut this based on four inches high. So you're going to need four inches. And I think this, you know, going across here is it's close to five inches. So as long as you have bits and pieces that that size will fit, you'll be able to use that piece of fabric. Um, so select your fabrics, go to the store, buy some fabrics, whatever it is you're going to do. Uh, you will need to press your fabrics so that you can cut them. And using your starch or starch alternative, whatever you choose to use, start your fabric and press it. When you press, don't, you're not ironing like you're ironing a shirt. You're not going to and do that. That distorts the fabric. Um, you're going to want to go gentle and kind of just press and move your iron across the fabric. We don't want to stretch it and distort it. If you just stretch it and distort it, it, it just won't lay flat. You'll, everything will be all wonky. You won't be happy. You probably won't finish it and it'll be a waste of fabric. So go easy on that. Um, if you choose to pre-wash, pre-wash. I don't pre-wash my fabric because I usually just want to dive into it. And fabrics are made really well nowadays with the dyes and stuff like that I rarely rarely have had any kind of bleeding or anything like that so gather your fabrics gather your supplies get your fabrics pressed and then um, in the next section we'll talk about cutting okay so now you're back uh, you've had your chance to go get your supplies uh, you've got your fabric you've pressed your fabric uh, now you need to cut your fabric into four inch strips and what we want to end up with and it's hard for me to tell you exactly how many strips to cut because it depends on how you're doing your fabric if you're using scraps or if you're using yardage um, everything's based off of a four inch strip and what you're going to need is um, when you're going to do your triangle pieces you've got your four inch strip I've already done my cutting but I left a few to show you and um, this is doubled over so I when I cut I cut two at a time I've set my other little camera up that's what you're seeing on the corner here so hopefully uh, you can see what I'm doing a little bit better and I'm going to stand up so what you're going to do is you're going to line your the edge of your fabric on the four inch mark of your ruler the edge of when you first start, let me start, let me back up a little bit. When you first start and you've got this straight edge and you're setting up your four inch line here, you want to make sure that you clear um, the, the ruler on this side. You will take your cutter and you will cut that off. That's just waste. So I've already done that. I've already made a few cuts. So I'm going to start right here. So Say you did that, <laughs> now you're going to go this way. I know that's going to be a little confusing. But you're going to line up the edge of your fabric on the edge of the ruler, your four inch line on the edge here. Hold your ruler so that a finger or two is on the mat that, and pushing on the edge and that kind of helps your ruler from pivoting. So we take our rotary cutter, make sure our fingers are clear on this side and make a slice. And there you go. To make more, you turn your ruler upside down, put it on the four inch mark here, on the edge of the fabric here. The top of your fabric will be against this blunt edge. When you're cutting, just a little tip, when you're cutting on a ruler and you're at the, at the corner, if you were to use your ruler over and over again and just start from out here and cut, Every time you cut, you're going to shave off a little bit of that plastic. Eventually, you're not going to have a nice edge on it. So what's good to do is start in a little bit, back up, and then make your cut. That way, you're not starting out here and nicking it. So go about doing that, changing your fabrics until you end up with 40 of these of your main print fabric. Then 
you're going to out of your background fabric with a four inch strip, you're going to um, cut some wrecks. You'll be cutting triangles um, out of your background fabric as well. What you need is 40 printed fabrics and you need eight background. No, 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 that's wrong. Sorry. Um, 24. You need 24 of the triangles in the background color. Then you're going to need 32 wrecks, which are your half triangles. What we're going to do here, you've got a 40 inch strip. We're going to line our four inch on the bottom and you make your cut. On the Rex tool, there is a little notch on the edge. You do want to cut that off. What that does, if you can see here, it, it gives that, uh, that corner just a little notch off. That is important when we go to put these, these triangles and things all together. And that, um, that helps us line things up. So when you, you've done that cut, you're going to turn your ruler over, line it up on your four inch again, line it up on your edge, make sure your fingers are out of the way, start in a little bit, back up and go. Move your fabric out of the way so when you make your notch, you're not cutting into that fabric if you were still needing to cut some more of those. So continue along that way until you end up with 32 wrecks, 40 printed triangles, and 24 background triangles. Get all that cut out and then we'll come back and we'll uh, sew it all together. Or show, I can show you how to sew it all together. <laughs> All right, so now we have all our pieces cut out. We have all of our print triangles, all of our background triangles, all of our Rex pieces. What we're also gonna need is to cut out pieces that go on the ends here. So what you need to cut from your four inch strip is you need to cut eight at four by five and three quarters. You need to cut eight four by four squares and you need to cut more than eight. Let me look at my notes, 32 that are four by two and a quarter. That's all out of the background fabric. So I um, might put that in the notes, but anyway, you can look back on the video and see how much you need. So what I like to do, being that this table runner is made up of um, four different blocks, I like to lay out a block at a time and get that sewn. So what we need, we're gonna start on the bottom on this four, four triangle row and we'll work up to here where we get those rows done. So you're gonna take your Rex pieces, make sure you have right sides facing up and you're gonna start with a Rex piece on this side and one on this side. Then you're gonna just take randoms, random or, or do it on in a specific order if that's what you're doing and you want this blunt edge of your triangles to be on the outsides. So we just kind of keep laying that out until we have four prints laid down. So let's just randomly pick these. I need to scoot this rack over. Let's grab this one. Make sure I got one. And there's your first row. So I like to lay that out. I'll continue on until I get all the rows laid out um, so that if I need to kind of move fabrics around, I can do that. So um, let me get that set up and then I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have everything all laid out. Um, uh, and so what I wanted to talk about what I did, I, I lay it out like this to make sure that I get my prints mixed up and, and things aren't right, same colors right next to each other, get a variation on, Oh, you know, like some of these greens are a little yellower and, you know, make sure that that's mixed up. So what I've done is on the row, which is upside down to you. Well, it doesn't really matter. It's an upside down pyramid for you. The five and three quarter inch mark, uh, pieces go on the outsides. A wreck always goes next to a triangle. The next row is the four inch piece. Wreck, then your triangles. The two and a quarter inch piece Rex and your triangles and the fourth one doesn't have those extra pieces. It just goes from the Rex 
into the triangles. This is how we're gonna sew it. We're gonna do this four times, okay? So let's just take this one block at a time. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my rec piece and my print piece, which goes like this, right sides together. You're gonna line up your edge, but you're also gonna, can you see how that little notch follows the edge of the fabric. So you line up that notch, line up the edge, sew a quarter of an inch, and press the seam open. And um, I'm gonna go sew this, and uh, let's talk about pressing. So everything's gonna be sewn the same way, pretty much. So. Um, let me take this one over to my sewing machine. I'm not gonna film it because I don't wanna move the cameras around and you know how to use your sewing machine. So, like I said, make sure when you're putting the rec on that that little notch is on the edge of the fabric and this whole edge is on the edge of the fabric. And so a quarter of an inch. And then I'll see you over at the ironing board. Okay, we're ready to press our pieces. We've got our rec piece on our triangle, the edge lined up with the edge here, the edge lined up here, sewed a quarter inch seam, and now we need to, uh, we need to press it. So what you're gonna do is just lay it down, press with no steam, this is a dry iron, steam will distort bias edges. Give it a shot to kind of press, uh, it helps press the thread into the fabric. Open it up gently with your finger, Press your seam open, use the tip of the iron. I'm hovering above, I'm not pressing down, but I'm using the tip of the iron to help open up that seam, and then I press down. Let it sit for, you know, five seconds or something, and your seam is pressed, pressed open. With the other pieces, this piece came from here. I went ahead and sewed it together. I matched that blunt edge, matched to the each side of the printed uh, triangle. Lined up my edge, right sides together, sewed a quarter inch seam, press down, open it up, get it open a little bit, press with your iron, lift, rinse and repeat. <laughs> so that's how you're gonna just keep moving along. Do that with each of the rows. Um, even when you get to the rows with, uh, that have the extra rectangle piece on the side, just keep doing it the same way. Sew that on, press the seam open. Just keep pressing seams open. Don't use steam and be gentle with your pressing and it should all turn out fine. So get all your four rows put together in individual rows and then I'll uh, come back with you and go over how we can uh, successfully add those rows together to keep your, your points pointy. One thing I do want to point out uh, when you are sewing these together is that uh, when you go to put the triangles, like two triangles together, it lines up really nicely. Your points will line up together on either side because you're, you've got the same angle on the triangle. So if you, the only one that needs that little notch is the rec piece, but when you go triangle to triangle, just put your points together line up your edge and sew your quarter inch. So I'm gonna to continue to put these together. All right, the next step to making the block, we've got all four rows sewn together. Now we need to sew these rows together to make our block. And um, it's really pretty simple. You're gonna, <clears throat> excuse me, what I like to do is I like to sew one and two together, three and four together, and then sew those units together. So take them right sides together. You're gonna to match your edge. These little tails or little dog ears that come off the edge of the, uh, the piecing here can help you keep it lined up. So if I just kind of line that up, and you can pin if you want to. I, um, if, I, if I'm not having any troubles with it, I don't bother pinning. I will sew my quarter of an inch and feeling as I go along to make sure that the seams underneath stay open, line my little dog ears up, keep going along, adjust my fabric so my dog ears line up. Sew along and, and just keep going along. If you, um, 
kind of hold it up together a little bit and you see that maybe one one row stretched out more than another and maybe um it's like if it were if i pull it out like that say like the top row that i have here is a little bit longer um i would a little trick that you can do is the row that is longer that has more excess fabric if you put that on the bottom when you sew so that the feed dogs are pulling that through, that will help. So I would flip this over. Okay, so I was going here, I was gonna sew across there. All I'm doing is flipping over. I'm still sewing across here, but the, the row that has extra fabric is on the bottom. So as I go along, my feed dogs of my sewing machine will help ease that in. If that were the case I don't know if this actually really is but that's just a little tip so whenever you have excess fabric on one piece to another the one with the excess goes on the bottom the feed dogs help feed that through the machine and it helps kind of even things out so um, so yeah so so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna sew rows four and three and four together two and one and two together when these two are sewn together, then sew all of them together. I've done that with my next block. So this block is all put together. So um, there's not much else I can say about it. Um, I'm gonna show you the back side of it. So you can see all the seams are pressed open. As you can see here, this has got a lot of layers of fabric. If you had pressed to one side, that would get really bulky. This is about as flat as you're gonna be able to get it, which is pretty flat. So that when you go to quilt it, if you're using it as a table runner and you go to set something on it, if there's like a big knot there, it's gonna make something be kind of tippy. So being that this is a table runner, you especially want it to be flat. But um, I will continue to make the other two um, blocks and then uh, you continue to do the same thing sewing your rows together, turning them into your blocks, pressing all your seams open still. And you can see by, by lining up those little dog ears, my points are, are staying pretty pointy. Now nothing is perfect. It is fabric. Fabric is flexible and moves around. So just do the best you can. Um, take it slow. Watch, watch everything that you're doing. Kind of feel things to make sure seams are staying open and it should go pretty well. Press gently like I showed before with the dry iron. When I get all of my blocks done and I sew them all together into the runner, then I will press on the top with steam because I feel like steam gives a crisper, uh, a crisper seam. But when we're putting this together and everything's still kind of moving around, like right now you've got straight edges on here so your bias is all tucked in and it's all secured I could go over this with a steam iron just pressing it down and make things lie a little bit flatter this will also be quilted so um, you know you're looking at just a flimsy so uh, continue to sew get all your rows together get your blocks together and then uh, we'll talk about some layouts Now you should have all four of your blocks made and it's ready to uh, be put together into your table runner. There are several different ways that you can put them together and I uh, want you to just play around with it until you get the look that you like. This is how I'm gonna set my green one here that I just made. So I ended up making two diamonds. Let me get out of the way. And I will sew those blocks together and that's how this table runner will look. So you've, that's one way. This was the first one that I had made, the black and white one, where I have a diamond in the middle and then the triangles on the outside, They're, or pyramids, I should say. This was the other one that I did. This uses a darker background, so you get a different look with the, the, the background really shows up as, as part of the design element because I feel like it gives it a zigzag look especially with um, the background triangles being a different color. It would have looked completely different had I used the purple as the background 
uh, in this one. So you can get a completely different look. So if you do choose to make the two color background is what I'm gonna call it because you've got this purple background and then you've got um, this, sorry, this green background that I use. So if you choose to do that, um, you will need, let me look at my notes, I'm sorry. A quarter of a yard to make these triangles. So you still need to cut 24 triangles and you can get 24 triangles out of a quarter of a yard. Um, it also depends on where you get your fabric because I know some places when they cut fabric they give you just a smidge extra, which I like because by the time you square it up you do lose some of your yardage. Um, if they are the type of place that cuts it exactly to a quarter a yard, um, you might want to buy a little bit more so that when you go to square it up, unfortunately you have to pay for the extra. So it just depends on where you buy it. Um, so you would need a quarter of a yard for your light background pieces and then if you were going to do this, you would need a half a yard for your dark brown. Um, this one uses the same color binding as the background. And this one I did uh, use the kind of silver gray as a contrasting binding. So um, there are so many ways that you can lay this out and play with it. So I hope you have fun doing that and um, it would be really fun to see if you do make something, um, post it on Instagram, hashtag me um, as Carrie underscore S. Um, let's talk a little bit now about the backing because in order to quilt it, you need some backing fabric. So for backing fabric, you, you need about a yard and a quarter. What I did on this, because this ends up being about 56 inches wide and the width of a yard of fabric is um, right around 42 inches. So in order to cut down, you can do this. What I did here is I took the width of fabric on this gray fabric and cut it about a third. And I then I had a red and white fat quarter that I threw in there. I sewed it all together so that it's not exactly in the middle and made the backing fabric for it that way. Uh, this other one I used very bright green, but I took the width of fabric, cut it about a third, and I had some, when I, because I used a charm pack for the prints, and so when I cut the triangle, I had kind of wreck pieces that were left, and I sewed those together in a strip. It gave me just enough to make this wide enough uh, as a backing. So it adds a little bit of interest to the back. Um, I can't tell you exactly how big to make your backing because it depends on how you're going to quilt it. If you're going to quilt it yourself, you don't need as much backing and batting as you would if you have a, a long armor do it for you. Uh, as a long armor, we need a little bit of extra room because of how it attaches to our machines. We have to clamp the sides to hold everything tight, so you need that extra room so the machine doesn't bump into them. So if you are going to have somebody long arm it for you, um, if you don't know how much they need, talk to them and see, see how much extra and make your backing accordingly. There are YouTube videos out there on how to um, baste a quilt, how to add a binding. I'm not going to go through that. I just encourage you to play with it and play with color. As you can see, the same pattern can look completely different depending on, on your fabric, your fabric choices and how you put it together. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you were able to follow along and I hope you try it. Um, so if you do, um, post a comment here even on the video um, or tag me on Instagram or something. I'd love to see it. So um, thank you so much for watching and following along. And um, hopefully I can do a tutorial in the future on something else. If you have any suggestions, let me know. So thank you for now and I will see you all later.